This journey started in the 60s, and I have fished from Alaska to Florida, hunted the Arctic for caribou, and combed the coastlines of Kodiak and the Aleutian Islands in search of meaning and purpose. These excursions exemplify a deeper understanding of success beyond that of just catching fish or bagging big game. They are about the chase and learning who you are. They are about exploring, appreciating, and respecting the vast expanses of our nation's forests, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans, and finding our place in the universe. My name is Gene Quinney. These are my stories, this is my life, and these are my adventures. There he goes. Oh, there it is, right there, right there. Oh yes, baby, that's a good one too. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh baby. Well, by the looks of that long ramp, you know that I'm on Rife Lake. And today we're gonna be fishing for Landlock Coho. Boat secure. Now I get to exercise my back. Okay, there's no debris over here on this end, down over here by the dam, and the water smoothed out really nicely. It's yeah, super smooth right here. Love it. Oh my gosh, water's a beautiful color. There's one other boat over here. Oh. Okay, I need to get this kicker warmed up. But before I do that, let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna down rig one rod to start with, like I always do. Here, let me get you, let me get you going the right direction there, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna down rig one rod, um, and then we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna put one on the surface. So this one, I'm gonna go on the surface. It's gonna have the mini micro hoochie, and it's gonna have that one, because it's already set up on the rod. And this is from Alder Lake. So I'm gonna stick with what I was using at Alder Lake first before I make any changes. Because if it works, I'm just gonna keep it on there. And this is gonna be a half ounce, uh, half ounce cannonball on my sliding dropper rig. That's gonna be the surface rod. And then the downrigger rod <clears throat> is going to be this one here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This flasher with a rubber snubber, about a, 11 or 12 inch leader with the sherbet hoochie. That's gonna go on the downrigger rod. And I'm gonna pull these around for a little while, see if I can catch any fish. And if not, then I'll switch up, depending on you know what happens and what I see. So um, I, I already see some fish surfacing, so I might have to go with two surface rods. I don't know. Dad gummit! <laughs> Oh man, I have to run back to the truck because my my bait is there. Oh, I have a bait container where I have all my scents. Yeah, I left my scents there. That's what exactly what I did. Gosh darn it. Okay, I gotta run back to the truck. I shall return. Bait container. Let me straighten you out there, huh? I got my goods and I don't know if you can see it, but today's weather forecast was scattered showers with diminishing rain throughout the evening. But right now I can see it is raining like crazy in the area we just came from. At least I have bait and no rain gear. I made it back into my spot just in time to be in the middle of a downpour. But I see clear skies over there and it's gonna be beautiful here just in about 10 minutes. Oh, okay, so I wanted to let you guys know or show you 
these clips that I make, I make these myself, these are downrigger clips, and these are just smaller clips um, that I use for trout and kokanee as opposed to the larger ones that I use for salmon <coughs> when I'm downrigging out in the ocean. But uh, 200 pound test line, about three foot long, and I stopped clipping, let me get you up here, Rick. I stopped using those big stainless steel clips that you clip right on the downrigger cable or on the downrigger line because um, I had a couple of times in the past few years where uh, you'd get tangled and the line from the other tangle, you know, would snap those things right off and you lose your stuff. So what I did was I started going to just a really big snap swivel. So there's no way that that can come off at all. Okay, a little bit of bait on those. Okay, um, get this thing set right. And we'll deploy the downrigger first. Then we'll get the surface rod out. First of all, I'm gonna make sure that thing is working properly. Yep, spinning, working, flashing, dodging. <laughs> and we're gonna go back 40 feet. 40 feet, give it a couple extra feet so I can grab a hold of it. And let me grab that clip. Come here, clip. Clip it in, send her down. We're gonna start at 36 feet because the surface rod will cover everything above that with the half ounce weight on there. Now the last Rife Lake video I made was last year. So it's been a year since I've been here. I'm gonna head towards the dam and make a loop and hopefully we'll find some fish and I'll just be able to make some circles and zigzag through them and catch a few. That's the plan. Still a few raindrops, but yeah. Boy, there were some dark clouds over there. Well, I think, I think I'm gonna take the, the weight off of this and bring it up to the surface. We're doing 1.3 miles per hour. Water temperature is 43.6. Very similar to what Alder was last week. And we're doing 80 instead of my standard 60. There is a storm cloud Blowing, blowing right at me. I mean, it is dark. Come on, fish. So I'm gonna get a little bit of sunshine here. I'm gonna make a switch here and go with this flasher, this dodger here, along with this lure. This is the one that was really successful on alder. And what it is, it's a kokanee king made by Lure Jensen, and they don't make them anymore, they're discontinued. So this is the only one that I could find anywhere. I couldn't find any on Amazon, online, none on eBay. None of these ones that are strictly chrome. I managed to find a couple that had a red head on them, uh, so I bought those and they were like 10 bucks, 11 bucks a piece. But, uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, I've had this one for probably 30 or 40 years, so hopefully I don't lose any, especially at that price, right? Oh, man. Come on, fish. Come on! I think it's kind of weird that they let you, that it's open all the way up to the dam here. I mean, I could literally go all the way up to the spillway. But I don't think I will. <laughs> Woohoo! There's a fish right there. Okay. That looks like a fish. Is he still there? Oh, no, he's still there. He's still fighting up a storm there. He's still there. We got him. We got him. Come on. Okay, come on. 
Oh, oh, get in the net. We got him. Right there. Fish in the net. On the Kokanee King. I think this fish is going to be okay. We're going to let him go. Come on. There he goes. You never know if those things are going to survive. But that one wasn't hooked all that bad. And uh, he took off no problem. Yeah! All right, and that came on the same one that worked on Alder. That Kokanee King. And that flasher right there. On the surface. Let's do that again. Well, we're gonna be out of the rain here shortly. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna can the, the downrigger and go with two surface rods. The second surface rod is just gonna have this, another um, Kokanee King just in a brass. It's a brass one like this. And I just scraped the paint off of this one side so it still has an orange head on one side of it. I'll get this out there, then I'll get that downer out of the way. Okay, that one's just 60 for now. If you watched that last video I did on Alder Lake, I had all these rods all kind of, you know, hokey. Uh, but I went ahead and installed another uh, rod holder mount. Okay. Luckily, the way these mounts for these big johns work is they can only come off one direction. You can't accidentally slide them off overboard. Let me wipe your face off. I just went through a bunch of fish and I'm still marking them. I'm going to have to make a, a little, little circle here and go back. Seems to be the only area where I was able to find fish. And we could be getting hit any moment now because I'm back there 120 on this one and 80 feet on, the, on that one there. Oh yeah, we're still marking fish here in 31 feet of water. Okay. Oh, there it is, right there, right there. Oh yes, baby, that's a good one too. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. oh baby, that is a good fish. Oh, that one's got some fight to it. Look at that. Nice. This is the one that was back there 80 feet. And that one's back there 120, so let me keep some pressure on them and bring it around this side underneath that rod. There was a nice school of fish right there. Okay. Come on. Definitely love that when you see the fish on the fish finder. Woo, yes. Oh, he's actually taking a little bit of drag. When you see the fish on the fish finder and then, come on baby, he's over there. What are you doing over there? I don't want you over there. I want you over here. Come on over here. Oh, this is a good sized fish. This is a good sized fish. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh no, he, he jumped out of my shallow net. 
Okay, come on. One more time. One more time. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Fish in the net. Look at the size of that coho right there. It's a landlocked coho. 16 or 18 inches. Look at that thing. Isn't that something? Beautiful fish. This is the only half and half Dodger I have in brass and chrome, but I do have another one on order. It did so well the other day on Alder, I had to pick up another one. And that's the lure right there that's just been, that's just been doing really well. We'll see if that brass one can, uh, oh, there. Oh, I just got hit again. Did you see that? It's that, that's that lure. I just caught that out of the corner of my eye. About time to call it a day. I found a couple places where I was marking a lot of fish, but not catching them. I switched several things up, but nothing's making any difference. I'm going to stop right here and collect my, collect my gear. Look at this thing. Isn't that something? Isn't that thing amazing? Things don't always go as you plan, right? Well, they do if you don't expect to catch fish. I guess what I mean by that is when I go when I go fishing I think I'm gonna catch fish but I don't set my expectations to where I'm disappointed if I don't because uh, it really doesn't matter to me if I catch fish or not uh, but it is kind of nice when I do and most of the time I do but there are times you know when I don't but look at this thing isn't that thing amazing I'm gonna take a couple of pictures of that. I bet you those roots are still another six or seven or eight feet long down into the soil. It's just incredible. It's the catch of the day. Well, you know how everybody says that the rife fish have a lot of worms, and I've seen them with a lot of worms, but all the fish I caught last year didn't have any. And let's see if this one does have some. Let's put them up here and open them up. And let's see if he has any worms in him. Look at that. Get him out of there. Looks like regular old guts to me. No worms in that fish. Let's get them cleaned out a little bit. Just a little. Put them in the cooler. I want to thank you for tuning into this episode. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I think the next time I'm down here, I'll probably hit the cowlets. I might even do that tomorrow. I'm not sure. My back is still bothering me really bad and uh, everything is just really difficult. And I apologize if I'm complaining too much about it, but it is really a pain in the, pain in the back. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Peace, love, and tight lines, and I'll see you on the water. Bye now. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other videos where you'll join us on the ocean catching kings and silver salmon, the lakes catching kokanee trout and landlocked coho. We'll also be working our riverfront homestead and harvesting venison. Stay tuned for more fishing and hunting and outdoor adventure videos. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you get notifications of new uploads. Thank you for watching.